Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of the third hour of power. This is Grady of This Form in Life, and this week we are studying lesson 24 of the Joseph Fielding Smith Manual of the work of Latter-day Saint women, unselfish devotion to this glorious cause. And uh, to help me with this lesson, I brought over an expert on women because she is a woman, um, is Camille of Modest Pop. Camille, thanks so much for joining me. Sure, no problem. Thank you. So Camille, tell me a little bit about, about Modest Pop. Okay, so Modest Pop is a website I started two years ago to provide more opportunities for women to dress modestly and stylishly. Um, basically, two years ago in Southern California where I live, it was really hot and I was tired of having to layer. So I thought, like, why aren't there more cloth modest clothing companies where you can just put on a shirt and you don't have to layer it? And it was bothering me, so I decided that I would start my own company. So I did. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I know. I'm especially here. I'm I'm out in Arizona now, and uh, and it's just really hot. I found. Um, yeah. And so, but I always have to wear two shirts. Right. All right. So lesson twenty four, um, we're in, and it starts out from some stories from the life of Joseph Smith, Joseph Fielding Smith, like like the lessons do, and the the story this this week I really liked talked about how. He would take his wife Jessie with him when he would go to speaking engagements, and she, I guess, was a beautiful singer. So he would often have her have her sing as well. And so he talks about in here that later, through the persistent and playful urging of his wife, Joseph would occasionally join Jessie in a duet, blending his own fine baritone with hers. Um, on these occasions, they would usually sit together on the piano bench while Jessie played the accompaniment. And there's two things that I love about the story. Is one is I think that would be so just adorable to see the prophet and his wife, you know, sit together um, at the piano and, and singing together. I mean, I don't, I don't think I have ever seen anything even remotely like that. I think that's adorable. But then just the idea too is that the way that those two complemented each other in bringing in the spirit. And I think when it comes to the society and the priesthood, there's a great compliment that comes from doing the work of God. Definitely, I think so too. I um. I like this lesson because it talks a lot about the temporal and the spiritual. And um, I think that, I think that it would, I wish that we could kind of have a glimpse at how it was back then to interact with the prophet. It wasn't just like he's at the pulpit and we're watching him on TV. It was more personal because there were less members of the church. Yeah. So I wish we could be back then and be part of that because that would have been a cool experience. And I'm sure most people back then were, were related still too. Probably. They were all cousins <laughs> or something. Cousin, auntie. Um, so tell us a little bit about section one. Okay, so section one, it talks about how the scriptures tell, talk about faithful women. And it talks a little bit about Eve, how she had the wisdom to know that they had to leave the garden. And the transgression was helped them to experience good versus evil and joy and um, it's, you know, something I taught on my mission and something I really appreciated about Preach My Gospel is because it talked about Eve in a light that made her sound intelligent and thoughtful. And a lot of Christians think that she just made a huge mistake. And so it's cool to have the gospel perspective that she was working. She was trying to just do the best thing for her family. And it was a hard decision, but she made the right decision. It was a decision based on following all of God's commandments and seeing the bigger picture. Yeah. And I, um, you know, I love going to the temple and, and, you know, and going through the endowment and learning more about the creation and that time in the garden and the new videos do a great job of just kind of dramatizing that experience and the thoughtfulness and the sorrow and the, and the great gravity that she understood um, that she was taking on at that time, even, even in their innocent yeah. state, you know, that she was aware. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and I just love the idea of that, that compliment. You know, sometimes when it comes to Relief Society and priesthood, there is the quorum and then there's Relief Society class. And I think that in a way almost diminishes um, the importance of that organization. There was a, uh, a talk that was given and I didn't get the author of it. So I'm going to plagiarize for a moment. Um, yeah. But basically she says... Um, that Relief Society is not just a class on Sunday. Um, it isn't just a place we go if we're not teaching in the primary or in young women organizations. It is the Lord's organization for women. Participation in Relief Society is part of our glorious heritage. 
and blessing as women in the Lord's church. And I, I, and I think it's important that, that, you know, Relief Society is, is a sisterhood. You know, it's, it's where, you know, friendships are, are groomed and, and created, and, and it's a service organization. You know, on, the, on the side of the lesson, if you're looking online, there's a couple of teaching helps. And one of them is um, a video about the Madeira Vineyard. And it talks about some Relief Society, or it shares some Relief Society sisters that go and do that service project. And they talk about how being out there together, serving together, really makes them feel stronger. It makes them feel unified um, when it comes to being sisters in the Relief Society. That's cool. Yeah, um, I think that Relief Society can be as important as um, people, you know, people if people give gravity to it. Because... I, I mean, right now, I'm not in Relief Society. I haven't been in Relief Society for the majority of the time I've been married, which has been the last seven and a half years. I've been in Young Women's for the majority of the time. But I still look forward to not just socializing with them, but, like, being able to go to the activities and feel like I'm part of it because there is a strength that comes from it. It's not just a social, like, oh, it's fun to see my friends that are in Relief Society. It's, like, the group... It was created to create, foster um, spirituality among women, bring women closer to Christ, and um, that is really important. And I feel like a strength from from my Relief Society class, but it is more than a class. It's like, like you said, it's a society where they strengthen each other, and whether you're actually there physically on Sunday in that class, it doesn't matter. You're still part of that group, and it still has that purpose. And if you... If you entertain that, then it can be a really strong thing for you. If, or if you minimize it, it can't, you know? Yeah, and, and I like that you bring up that idea that, you know, just because you serve in primary or you serve in young women's, it doesn't mean that you're not part of that society. Um, yeah. You know, and we see that too in priesthood is that sometimes there's a little bit of a, of a disconnect between the brothers that serve with the youth and and those who are who are attending quorum. And I think it's so mm-hmm. important for, you know, our Relief Society president to make sure that they are reaching out to those sisters so they don't feel separated. They don't feel, you know, taken apart and not part of that organization. That They feel, right. you know, loved and needed and that, yes, they'll do their calling service, but there's also service that should be done as a sisterhood. Well, right, like visiting teaching. That's kind of what unifies you is that you're all, no matter if you're in primary or young women's or nursery or library or whatever, you're all visiting teachers, so that helps. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about Section 3 a little bit. All right, Section 3. Section 3 um, talks about how women have a special touch um well that was what i took out of it um it talks about women lending their aid and encouraging helping the wayward um and it talks about how um that whenever anybody's in trouble needs help in difficulty sick or afflicted we call upon the relief society and you know these it's funny how like temporal stuff and spiritual stuff there's like a crossover because for example if a family has a new baby and they need meals brought in that's a temporal thing, but it's also a little bit more because when somebody serves you and reaches out of their life to go ahead and make you a meal and bring it to you, it's, it lets you know that they care about you and that they love you. And it's strengthening spiritually because it's like, okay, these people care about me. They love me. I want to be at church with them. I want to be a part of, of this of this ward. I feel like unified. So it's temporal and it's spiritual too because um, you feel so grateful and you know it came from the heart and you're just – you you realize like you all depend on each other. And um, I think that's really powerful, especially when you've been the recipient. Um, I had a baby five months ago and like, I can't remember how many dinners I got, but in our ward, it's a little different. They don't just bring you the whole meal, they'll break it up. So like someone will bring you a dessert and an appetizer and a salad and somebody else will bring you the main meal. And so you have like two different people come into your house to bring you the food and you just feel so loved and something that you really can't do for yourself very well at that time of your life you know and you just appreciate it so much and I think that that really can't be overlooked because those temporal things they really add up and they make a huge amount of difference it's like a stationary progressive dinner yeah it was great I loved it (laughs) gotta have another kid so I can get free food (laughs) well and I think too there's that idea that when I'm not there people people miss me people notice that I'm not there and they're here to to help Um, yeah you know, and, and that, that softens your heart. It makes it easier for you to feel the spirit. You know, that person, you know, I, I think about an experience when, you know, we, we had just 
chaos, you know, going on in our lives. We're getting ready to move, things are going on, and mm -hmm. one of the sisters that was, I don't think she was actually in our ward, uh, my wife and her just served together in a combined um, scouts, and she says, hey, I'm going to bring you guys dinner tonight. And I was like, no, it's okay, it's fine. And she's like, no, I want to bring yeah. you dinner. So we're like, okay, great. So that not, that day, we got some some news about our daughter that, you know, she had some health issues, and we were just devastated, and things were really hard for us. And then all of a sudden, there she is at 5.15, knocking on the door with dinner. And it was just such a relief, yeah. and it made totally. us – get it? Relief Society. Um, yeah. That didn't happen intentionally. But it was a relief for us. You know, and, and as a result, you know, our love for her grew because – she thought about us and she knew our need and that she was sensitive to the spirit to realize that, you know, she had a prompting that she knew she needed to follow, even though we were kind of trying to turn her away and say, we don't need it. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Lord knew we were going to need it that day and that, you know, she was inspired. I think that's what the Relief Society really is for. It's like temporal relief and spiritual relief. They're so intertwined. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add to this lesson? Um... I really can't remember exactly where it was. It was something about how women have a special touch, sort of. It mentioned that. Um, and it reminded me of missionaries. Like, sister missionaries can sometimes get into doors that elders can't, you know? And that's just the way it's supposed to be. Like, women need men and men need women in the church. And uh, we all have different strengths. But sometimes you just need, like, you know, if there's a gruff guy at the door and he's like, go away. But then if there's two women instead of like two men, he might be like, oh, you know, I'm a little bit nicer. And sometimes women can get people to soften their hearts a little easier than men can. So I think that, um, you know, that's another reason that there's strength in really society is just because women have that softer side and sometimes people react more softly to them. Yeah. And there's always, you know, sensitive situations that maybe a, a sister's touch can, can really help with or they just are more aware of the situation. It was mm -hmm. uh, it was neat. I was serving um, with a calling where I was sometimes asked to be in in PEC meeting, and typically that's just the elders quorum president, high priest, group leader, bishopric, and I think the mission right. mission or mission leader. But they often invited their Relief Society president because mm -hmm. her and her sisters had a lot of insights into family situations that we didn't always Absolutely. know. Right, because maybe their kids do play dates together or whatever. They just have like they have eyes and ears everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe there's a sister who's who knows that her husband is struggling and her husband is too prideful to say anything about it. You know, yeah. you know, those kinds of things, you know, were, were insights that helped us be better priesthood holders and helped her as well to be, you know, better in her calling and help us overall, you know, serve in, in God's kingdom. And we were always really appreciative when they would come and, and share things like that. Um, so Camille, tell us a little bit about Modest Pop right now. Do you guys have anything going on for Christmas? Right. So actually, well, we always, yeah, we always have deals going on for Christmas. We have a coupon code. It's called Mary 15. You can say 15%. Um, it actually goes through the end of the year. So it's not just till Christmas, but, um, so you're covered for Kwanzaa. Think, yeah, exactly. We, we just want to stay politically correct. People we don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing right now. And then missionaries always get 15% off, um, with the code called to serve. And, um, you know, like if you follow us on Facebook, Modest Pop, you'll see like flash sales or just random sales all the time. So just follow us if you want to get some good deals and see what the new arrivals are, just so you can stay in the know. I love it. I love it. And I have another question. So if you are watching us on the live feed, um, you just moved your monitor, but on your wall is a gigantic sword. Tell me about that. Oh, you can see the sword now? Oh, man, I better move it. <laughs> Moving it to away from the sword. Okay. The, the sword is purposely put on where it is on the wall because when you open the door, you can't see it. Um, my husband wanted to put his sword up in our house, and I was like, as long as it's in a hidden spot, that's really funny that the sword was visible. Um, yeah, my husband got it from his friend. He served his mission. His friend served his mission in Spain. So it's like an authentic Spanish sword. I don't know what that means, like, but he, he bought it. It was kind of expensive, actually. My husband gave him his friend money, and then his friend brought it home from the mission, and he's had it since then. It's been like 12, 13 years. I love it. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeff, who um, helps us with This Week in Mormons, our, our, uh, we call him our benefactors, his brother Colin also is really big into swords, uh, but his are all like Lord of the Rings swords and things like that. Um, oh, okay, they're cool. more movie replicas, not like the real thing. Yeah. But still awesome nonetheless. Um, well, well, Camille, thank you so much for joining me this week. I, I really appreciate it, and uh, and I love the insights that you added. I just I couldn't do this lesson with another guy. I wanted to have a sister's viewpoint, so this was perfect. Thank you. 
Thanks. All right. So thank you everyone else for listening as well. Um, on behalf of Camille, my name is Grady of This Mormon Life. That's www.this-mormon-life.com. Um, you can also find me on Facebook um, and Camille. And what I'll do is I'll throw Facebook links into the show notes this week. So go by oh. This Week in Mormons and you can see those. You can click on them. I'll put those, those promo codes in there. Uh, if you've got some shopping to do for Christmas, Modest Pop, I think is a great place. I checked it out. Super stylish stuff. And so I think it's really cool. And I, I really appreciate you kind of coming in and sharing with that. And until next time, my name is Grady. And we bid you all a fond adieu.